I got my uh, pretending to be Irish shirt on and self-identifying as a uh, leprechaun today. So today is all about getting one complete awesome McMeal off the silverback. Now the key to this meal is kind of staging everything, staggering it a little bit. Basically once our meat goes in the cooler to rest for a couple hours, that's when we're going to bake our bread and that's when we're going to put the cheesy corn on. This is our corned beef. We have bought a pre-packed corned beef. We've soaked it uh, for 24 hours, changed the water about every six hours to really pull some of that saltiness out. Hit it with some great rub. Um, so my rub for this was basically uh, a lot of black pepper, garlic powder, onion flakes, smoked uh, ancho chili powder. I found a new rub that pairs great with that Guinness reduction. Put it on the rub, put it in this bag, just left it in the fridge for about six more hours and it was ready to go. So let's get our, our brisket on here. Same thing I used on the brisket, except with the brisket, look at this thing, giant brisket, it's awesome. So the brisket, I did put a lot of salt on it and I did that last night. We're running uh, cherry and pecan pellets today. It's just a combination I like. I use it for just about everything. And look at that. Silverback's already smoking. You gotta love it. So we're gonna let this rest do its thing. Let the silverback do the work for us while we go drink some more Guinness. Check back in a bit. We're gonna mist here. Again, just a white mist. I'm gonna go once we get done with this. About, this is about time I'd throw a probe in all this to start checking temperature because it looks like we're starting to get really good color, really good bark here. Let's talk about our cabbage. All you got to do for your cabbage is core out the, uh, the center and you want to core that as deep as you can. It's one tablespoon of rub, about half a stick of butter, kind of shove it down in there really good. Another tablespoon of rub, just kind of keep compacting, stacking that up there um, and then you just top it off. What I do once I've got all that butter in there, you'll see it. I shove my finger down through it, make a finger well, and I pour white balsamic vinegar into the core. And I just like that offset of flavor. I like that brightness, the sweetness that that balsamic brings to it. Um, then I take one of the, the leaves that have fallen away in our core. You'll see I push right here. This is where we cut out for our core. And then I just like to take a little butcher's twine and kind of use it to tie up the cabbage just kind of keeps all the leaves in place in case it gets loose over the cooking. Take a sheet of aluminum foil, roll it up, make a ring, and it just, you set these guys on there, it keeps them in place, it keeps them from tipping and dumping out all the juices. Oh yeah, getting good bark on that piece up there. All right, that reduction. Um, it started out with the idea that it was going to be kind of a balsamic glaze to offset some of the, um, the heavier notes that I was putting in the rub. Two bottles of Guinness, one can of uh, Campbell's French onion soup, used half a cup of uh, balsamic vinegar, a quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce, uh, one tablespoon of uh, minced garlic, a quarter cup of kitchen accomplice beef broth, one tablespoon of tomato paste. I put one teaspoon of black peppercorns in there. That's just personal preference, you can skip that. A third of a cup of brown sugar. This was put in there to really cut the just the hard, hard bitters that were in there in the balsamic and the Guinness. Here's the tricky ingredient, half a teaspoon xanthan gum. Whirl it up. You're gonna chop up all those peppercorns, uh, the chunks of that French onion soup, just whirl it up till it's just silky smooth. Then put it back on the heat. Once it thickens to just about where you want it, you're gonna add about a half a stick of Kerrygold salted Irish butter, okay? Again, St. Patty's Day, Irish ingredients, but that, a little bit of butter at the very end will add just a little more sweetness, a little more smoothness to that, that reduction. Big brisket has hit a temp of about 160, 162 internal. The little pre-corned beef one uh, is at 150. Beautiful crust on it. Looks fantastic. And it's going to be awesome. So let's get her down here. Let's set it right here. I'm going to take just a little bit of that that reduction and I'm just going to pour it on and you can see it's it's really thick it's a nice reduced reduction here and I pulled way more paper than I need Let's see if that'll stay together and it's going to breathe a little bit I don't wrap too ultra tight with the paper I do let it breathe so let's get this set back up here 
It is crazy windy. Goodness gracious. Let's pour it in here. I'll pour it kind of from up high. Maybe you can see how thick that is. It's quite the reduction. All right. All right. We're at the uh, about the three hour, four hour mark right now <clears throat> on the cabbage, and I'm gonna wrap it just so it gets good and tender. So let's get this guy set over here in the first bit of foil. Let's see if I can do this without dumping all the uh, <clears throat> the butter and the juice out of it here. This is our corned beef brisket here. Woo! That guy is hot. You hear it? You hear it snack, snapping? Man, wicked, wicked hot. All right. Let's get this shut here. And we'll get these guys resting in the camper. I'll be back in just a minute. Let's talk about this corn recipe. Corn O'Shane. It's a, you need two bags of 26 ounce frozen corn. Three to four cups of shredded cheese, one brick of cream cheese, six slices of bacon chopped up, half an onion diced, half of a red bell pepper, half of an orange bell pepper, both diced, salt and pepper to flavor. You can totally put uh, the Gorilla Rub in this. But once you get it all together and all mixed up, this is what we're talking about. I mean, look at that. Cheesy, corny, goodness, right? Uh, cheesy and corny. Hey, it's Shane all day long. So, corn, oh Shane. So let's get this in here. I'm gonna go inside, mix all the ingredients together for the uh, for the bread. So this bread is a real basic, um, what do I call them, a quick bread recipe. It starts off with a half cup white sugar, four cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, and three quarter teaspoons of salt, one to two cups of raisin. So basically you combine all those ingredients together, that's all your dry, and then you bring in another bowl, two eggs, one and a quarter cups of uh, buttermilk, one tablespoon of caraway seed, and one cup of sour cream. You bring that all together. Um, this dough, when you put it together, it's gonna be really sticky and be a lot like cookie dough. Our silverback's just about getting up the tent. We're at 340 now, it needs to be at 350. We put that rack in there and we're gonna set our bread right here on top. And we're gonna let that guy go. Okay guys, everything's done cooking. So uh, check this out, look at this. Awesome stuff. Nice brown on it, it's firmed up. We're taking our cabbage off, taking our corn off. Beautiful pastrami slash corned beef. The uh, the bread, oh, it has such a great flavor. Of course our uh, corn O'Shane oh hanging out over here. And then just a standard brisket with our, uh, our Guinness gravy. But, uh, and of course the cabbage is kind of hanging out underneath all that, but you don't care about any of that. You care about what it tastes like. So let's uh, let's talk about it. A little smaller cut. This is the uh, pastrami. Oh wow. Mmm. Wow. The richness of that gravy with the saltiness of that pastrami, out of this world. Out of this world. That may be one of the best things I've t cooked on the silverback in in quite a little while. Mmm, wow. That's a home run right there. And then of course our uh, our cabbage. Mmm. It's steamed really well. It's got a really nice bite to it. You gotta like cabbage flavor though. It's got a nice little smoke. I might drizzle this with a little more balsamic at the end just to give it a little more pop, but pretty fantastic. And easy, and of course the uh, the corn O'Shane with the uh, let's get a this smells amazing. Mmm, cheesy, smoky, bacony. What else do you want? Let's check out some of this brisket. Oh man, brisket ultra tender, ultra ultra tender. Let's get that gravy on there. Mmm. Wow. 
So this Guinness gravy is somewhere between brown gravy, a super umami beef broth with like mushrooms, and this final hit of Guinness at the very end, just like bang, that little bitter that Guinness has at the very finish. It's all right there, so you still know it's Guinness. Pretty fantastic, wow. And of course our Irish shoulder bread. Look, it both baked all the way through. It has a light smoky smell. Had a beautiful crust on the outside. Mm. Mm. You definitely get the, kind of that, that twang of the caraway seeds in it. And you get a little sweet from the raisin. It's quite good. If this plate right here doesn't please your little leprechauns at home, nothing much will, guys. Feel free to get in contact with us. Follow us on Facebook at GorillaGrills.com, Twitter at GorillaGrills, Instagram, YouTube. Guys, check out the Gorilla Grills YouTube channel. It's popping with information. And don't forget to check out our recipe section at GorillaGrills.com slash recipes. I'm Shane McDraper for St. Patrick's Day. This has been Gorilla Grills. We did this awesome plate of food, all of it on this awesome silverback.